It is time for our main event, Oscar De La Hoya versus Fernando Vargas. It's been 15 months since De La Hoya last fought. Tonight, at 154 pounds, can he shake off the rust, stand up to and handle the naturally larger Vargas? And can Vargas control and effectively use his emotion rather than having it control him once the bell rings? The answers are moments away. De La Hoya Vargas is being brought to you by Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, Elegance and Entertainment on the Las Vegas Strip. By Miller Lite, it's Miller time. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by the folks at HBO. During tonight's show, at keyword HBO PPV, America Online members will be able to get information and predict who will win tonight's main event. And then during the fight itself, they can vote on who they think is actually winning. So log on now to cast your vote for Oscar De La Hoya or Fernando Vargas. Outside of Lewis Tyson, this is the most anticipated fight of the year, and it figures to be a lot more competitive than Lewis Tyson was. Moments from now, Oscar De La Hoya and Fernando Vargas. A pair of Mexican-Americans, both Southern Californians, both former Olympians, both champions at 154 pounds, both professing dislike for the other, will finally meet in the ring. Among those on hand, Evander Holyfield, who continues to campaign at age 39. Sugar Ray Leonard, it took a whole long time for him to get it out of his system. Now just a spectator. John Ruiz, who holds a heavyweight belt and is rumored to be thinking about a fight with Roy Jones Jr., who would move up in weight to do it, move up by quite a bit. The hitman, Tommy Hearns. And the man generally regarded as the world's best featherweight, Marco Antonio Barrera, in the crowd tonight. Emmanuel Stewart is here. Well, we got a look at one of your old charges from the Cronk Gym in Detroit. Thomas Hitman Hearns, when he moved up in weight, he retained a whole lot of wallop. There's a question about whether Oscar De La Hoya does the same. That's a serious question that the whole boxing game is right now considering. Uh, Tommy went through six weight division. He went from a welterweight, junior middleweight, middleweight, super middleweight, light heavyweight, and cruiserweight, and still was a knockout puncher. I think Oscar's biggest problem is the fact the way that he's training, he's not punching all the way through with his punches now, focusing more on defensive tactics and uh, speed for the most part. And then you look at Oscar, he's really a small bone person, too. I think he only wears about an eight or eight and a half shoe as compared to Fernando Vargas and the other guys. So by nature, he's not really a heavy bone man anyway. We discussed this earlier in our pay-per-view telecast, but many viewers are probably just joining us as we move closer to the main event. So I'll pose the question to you again. Three fights ago, Fernando Vargas displayed great courage, but lost and lost convincingly at TKO in the 12th to Felix Trinidad, and he went down five times in the process. So though Vargas is only 24, young and strong, there are a number of people who think that that fight took something out of him. Personally, I don't think it's just a guess. We'll find out tonight. Everyone is different. You look at Joe Lewis. He took a terrific long beating when he fought Max Mellon the first time and was knocked out in the 11th round. Uh, didn't suffer anything from it. And even Roberto Duran, one of the most brutal knockouts probably in boxing history, Thomas Hearns, never was knocked out since then. He went on to beat Irene Barkley and a lot of other guys. Everybody's body is different. And I personally feel that Fernando, being a young guy, has recuperated from that, and I think it's not going to have a lingering effect, but we will find out later on tonight. We know what Oscar De La Hoya says that his motivation is. Huge purse for him tonight, 14 million guaranteed, could well approach 20 million, but he's a millionaire already a hundred times over. It's about his place in history. He'd like to win this one, then set the stage for a rematch with Sugar Shane Mosley. He's hoping that Felix Trinidad will consider coming out of retirement. Trinidad steadfastly says he won't, but perhaps a huge money fight with De La Hoya would be the lure. And then there's even talk about De La Hoya against Bernard Hopkins. Now, all that is fine in theory, but there are some who say at age 29, with all he's accomplished, he can't possibly have the same motivation here as Fernando Vargas will bring into this ring. That's a fact. You know, Oscar De La Hoya started boxing at the age of five, had an unbelievable amateur career, went on to win the Olympics, won every kind of international title, started fighting super fights, almost his first fight as a professional fighter. And when you look at the fact that he's 29 years old, it's amazing that he's still having any type of an excitement about boxing, particularly with the money that he's made all along the way. You know, he actually 
told me and others over the past few months that, hey, after all, face it, it's dangerous, it's tiring, I don't like <laughs> getting up early in the morning to do the road work, but I'll say this, when I spoke with him in the spring, he was much more tentative than in the days leading up to this fight. Some sort of change in his mindset happened this spring and into the summer. If you had spoken to him in March or April, you wouldn't have thought that his heart was in it at all. It certainly changed since then. The question is how much? Well, you know, he's married now. He seems to be very happily married and spends a lot of time with his wife. I think he has a beautiful home he bought in Puerto Rico, I understand. And uh, they're both singers. And I'm, I'm one of the few guys who really like Oscar singing. And uh, I think it's only normal when a guy's had so much success so soon for him to want to dwell into other things. But for this fight, I think he's going to come up to the level that's necessary for him to perform good. His wife, Millie, who is a pop star in Puerto Rico, was with him throughout the latter stages of training camp. Now, as an old trainer, how do you view that? Personally, I don't believe in that. I think a fighter needs to get into a Spartan-type animalistic state of mind preparing for a big fight. But everyone works different. Uh, historically, it's been proven that for the most part, fighters should not have their wives or girlfriends around. Lastly, Floyd Mayweather Sr. is the trainer now for Oscar De La Hoya. He's gone through a succession of trainers. You were somewhere on that <laughs> list. Mayweather Sr., self-proclaimed world's greatest trainer, the man is not shy, he says he has turned De La Hoya from a guy too reliant on the left into a two-handed fighter. Your view? Well, he's only been with Oscar in two fights, and those two fights have never, have not impressed the public for the most part. He beat, I think, Arturo Gatti, who he was much physically stronger than, and had a rough fight in that, and then he went to full limit with uh, another fighter who was not that talented. So that still remains to be seen. But the one thing I must say, Oscar is a very talented fighter anyway, regardless of me or whoever's worked with him. And he's been so responsible for the big resurgence in interest in boxing the last eight years because he's fought everybody out there. He's fought from Quarte and, and Pernell Whitaker, Shane Mosley, Trinidad, even tonight. So I give him a lot of credit for this big crowd we have here in the interest in boxing. Probably more so than any one fighter in the last eight years. Well, I no question about that. Hall. He is the biggest pay-per-view draw outside of the heavyweight division. By far the biggest non-heavyweight pay-per-view draw in history. Now we've just gotten an update. The fighters are expected to walk into the ring in about six minutes from now. Let's take a look at our AOL online poll results. It was 75% in favor of De La Hoya earlier. Now it is closed up. 55% of those voting online believe that De La Hoya will win. 45% back Vargas. The line in Vegas was 12-5 for De La Hoya, 12-5. In a poll of 21 sports writers taken by the Las Vegas Review Journal, 20 of the 21 picked De La Hoya. But you believe it's going to be a closer fight than those results would indicate. I think the people that voted online are smarter than these supposed boxing writers here. When you look at all of the guys that voted, particularly when you throw out Michael Katz's vote, which doesn't count when it comes to Oscar, I mean, everyone picked Oscar to win among the sports writers. I think 65 and 45 and those type figures are more realistic. What's your pick? It's two picks. When you look at logic and you look at all of the technical things, it's Oscar. Then you look at emotions and other factors and the fact that they are underestimating, I think, Vargas' ring generalship. I see Vargas. The general feeling among most of the people here, I'm beginning to find that's moving towards Vargas. So I'm really kind of up in there. My little gut feeling keeps saying Vargas, which doesn't make sense when I know that Oscar's a better fighter. So that becomes the pick then. <laughs> Vargas becomes your pick. I got to hold you to uh, something. <laughs> okay, if you want it. All right. right. Okay, let's look in on Fernando Vargas. Uh, this would be the scene in his dressing room. This is live. Now about four minutes from the time when they will be summoned toward the ring. And that brings us to the time. When we turn it over to the fellows who will call the action, they are, of course, George Foreman, Larry Merchant, and Jim Lampley. So let's go downstairs ringside. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Bob Costas. Incidentally, one note on the little delay that we have experienced here. Fernando Vargas had originally agreed that if 
Everybody else was ready to go at 8 o'clock. He'd walk to the ring at 8 o'clock. He's managed by Shelly Finkel, same man who managed Mike Tyson, who pulled this in Memphis, where at the last minute he decided that he would wait an extra 15 minutes to walk to the ring. I guess it worked so well for Tyson, they decided to do the same thing for Vargas, and Vargas flatly stated a long time ago, or not a long time ago, but 10 minutes ago, that he wouldn't walk out until 8.15, regardless of what he had said prior to the fight. This is in keeping with the pattern where uh, Fernando Vargas, in the days leading up to this fight, canceled a variety of media appearances, Larry Merchant, claiming that the number of interviews he did before the Trinidad fight affected his focus and hurt him in the fight. Are they dreaming? Well, it's an inconvenience, and everybody forgets it as soon as the bell rings. We know that. All right, well, let's go to uh, our final comments now prior to the walk-ins as we had planned. Larry, so much emotion, five years of buildup, bad blood, as Bob pointed out. With all of this hanging over the fight, will it necessarily affect the competition, and if so, how? Will it produce recklessness or perhaps more caution than might be expected? Probably some of both, but before I could give you a definitive answer, Jim, I've got to decide whether this is a fight or a grand opera. For years, these two fighters have been behaving like tenors barking at each other across a stage. You're a phony. You're a thug. I'd die to win. I'll retire if I lose. I'll swallow the worm with my tequila. I have more hot chilies in my blood. I hate you. I hate you. The only relevant comment may have come from Oscar De La Hoya when he said that Vargas seemed to him like a celebrity stalker. Tonight, Vargas will be a celebrity stalker in the ring. And I believe, Jim, that the fight will be told on how well one fighter stalks and the other fighter deals with it. Hmm. Interesting. You eliminated the little observation about sword play, huh? <laughs> all right. Well, I'll say it. Eventually, we get to the sword play. Okay. So much for all those preliminaries, as Larry pointed out. Now we get to the main business, and it's younger, stronger, hungrier, but with a suspect chin, that's Vargas, against slicker, quicker, richer, but with suspect punching power, that's De La Hoya. Turning to two-time world heavyweight champion and HBO expert boxing commentator George Foreman, George, what'll determine who's going to win this fight? It's about desire this time. All of the guys, uh, Oscar De La Hoya is a great boxer, combination puncher. Vargas, he has all of the other necessities. But one thing is going to make a difference tonight is passion. Who's willing to get bloody, swollen, and keep answering the bell round after round? I'm telling you, Vargas seems to be the more hunger for that. He's not pretty. He's not even trying to look pretty. De La Hoya, he's got it all made. Hmm. All the writers picked De La Hoya. Sounds to me like Emmanuel Stewart and George Foreman both just picked Fernando Vargas. So here comes the tale of the tape. Marasca De La Hoya against Fernando Vargas in one of the most hotly anticipated fights in our sport in recent years. De La Hoya still on the light side of 30, but getting close. Vargas so much, so soon, so much already under his belt, and still only 24. A half-inch height advantage for De La Hoya. A one-inch reach advantage for Vargas. They both weighed in at 154 pounds. CompuBox numbers, Larry. A look at how they fought against a common opponents. You could see the numbers are very similar, as almost identical, in fact, in the average punches per round and punches landed. Rules to the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Oscar De La Hoya, Fernando Vargas fight. He's scheduled for 12 rounds using the Unified Rules of the Association of the Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. As the result of a negotiation, Fernando Vargas will be entering the ring first and will be introduced last. Why the negotiation? Because, of course, both fighters hold title belts at 154 pounds.
And here comes Fernando Vargas. 356 days out of the ring. That's a long stretch of inactivity. But hey, De La Hoya hasn't been in the ring in more than 440 days. Once again, Julio Cesar Chavez at the shoulder of Vargas as he enters the ring, just as he was when Vargas came into the arena several hours ago. Chavez, as Larry Merchant pointed out, a symbol to Mexican American and Mexican fans of Vargas's solidarity with his machismo heritage. We'll see if the De La Hoya crowd is up to the challenge. Of all the fighters in boxing right now, only Lennox Lewis is as familiar as is Oscar De La Hoya with this kind of atmosphere this kind of high-stakes fight. Businessman getting ready to go back to the office. You can almost visibly see him trying to control his emotions and stay in a clinical boxing mode as he prepares for this fight. He's coming in without any props. What a concept.
Kings make their statements. What a night in Las Vegas. Let's go to Michael Buffer to take it up even higher. Ladies and gentlemen from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Top Rank Incorporated and Main Events are proud to present the featured bout of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC, WBA, Super Welderweight, Junior Middleweight Championship of the World. Brought to you in association with Miller Lite and HBO Pay-Per-View and sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Dr. Luther Mack, Commissioners Dr. Tony Alamo, Skip Avancino, John Bailey, and Dr. Flip Homansky, Timekeepers Jane Broadfoot and Jim Cavan, Physicians at Ringside Dr. Margaret Goodman, Dr. James Game, Dr. William Berliner, and Dr. Jeff Davidson. The three judges assigned to ringside scoring this bout on the 10-point must system will be Patricia Jarman Manning, Paul Smith, and Doug Tucker. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action working for the 151st time in a world title bout, Joe Cortez. And now for the sold out thousands in attendance here at the Mandalay Bay of Las Vegas and the millions watching around the world. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. It's champion versus champion. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue and red, and officially weighing 154 pounds. Since capturing Olympic gold in 1992, he now has a professional record of 34 victories, including 27 knockouts with only two defeats and six world titles. From East Los Angeles, California, the six-time world champion, the reigning, defending, WBC Super Welterweight Champion of the World, the Golden Boy, Oscar La And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, and his official weight is also 154 pounds. His professional record, 22 victories with only one defeat, and 20 of his 22 victories are by knockout. And he has captured two world titles. From La Colonia Boxing, Oxnard, California, the two-time world champion, the reigning, defending, WBA Junior Middleweight Champion of the World, the Aztec Warrior, El Feroz Ferocious, Fernando Vargas. All right, gentlemen. We went over the rules of the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. I want good sportsmanlike conduct. Oscar, your cuffs, the trunks are a little high here. The punches here are still good. Your trunks are okay here. Remember, guys, I want a clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. And remember, guys, I'm fair but firm. Touch them up. That's all you Will we have? More blood, bad blood than sweet science, or more sweet science than bad blood? Marcus relatively dry after warming up in his dressing room, but now apparently some of the sweat evaporating in the arena. De La Hoya very wet, seemingly very well warmed up as round one begins. These two fighters have been out of the ring so long, we expect the first round to be cautious and tactical. George Foreman 
What must the two fighters establish from the outset? Oscar De La Hoya has got to get in there with that left jab and take some of the power out of the big man. Make that neck snap back over and over. Vargas has got to wade in and get in that body. Oscar wants this fight to go the distance. you got to wade in and get in his body as this Vargas. Get in and go wild on the body. Early on, Vargas not getting off quickly for the first 30 seconds of the bout. De La Hoya landed two combinations. Deloia going to the body and slipping the counters. Deloia's jab, one of the primary reasons why all of the sports writers at ringside who were polled this morning and might have been expected to be objective, picked Deloia to win the fight. These guys got shoulders and forearms like Super middleweights and light heavyweight. They don't up up top. They look like big men. Vargas working with a nutritionist for the very first time in his career. Fernando's body has never looked this tight and cut up. De La Hoya has gotten stronger as he has filled out in weight. Crowd chanting for Vargas, but early on, it's been De La Hoya dominating the action. So far, De La Hoya consistently beating Vargas to the punch. Focusing his jab on De La Hoya, or on Vargas' body, and now Vargas lands a big left hook counter upstairs. Drives De La Hoya into the ropes. De La Hoya close to being knocked down there. Ducks and slips, gets away. And already you see the difference. When Vargas has De La Hoya against the ropes, it's a different fight. Big right hand by Vargas. De La Hoya slips that one. Oscar De La Hoya was stunned by the counter left hook. You better believe De La Hoya is acquainted with adversity that has nothing to do with what he's going to do later on. Been there, done that. Not there many of those punches landed cleanly, but they've made an impression. Those punches from Vargas are landing. What an instructive first round. De La Hoya shows you what he can do in the middle of the ring. Vargas shows you what he can do against the ropes. In his corner, De La Hoya said, all of the punches missed me. That one didn't hit him, they hit him on the shoulder. These were not clean punches, but they made an impression. Look at Later in the round, those two left hands made an impression on De La Hoya. Copy box numbers in round one. Vargas with the late rally, 24 out of 51. De La Hoya, 18 out of 45. Most of De La Hoya's connects the jab, most of Vargas's connects our punches. De La Hoya going back to the body and whacking Vargas with the right hand. <laughs> Looks like De La Hoya is very conscious, George, of trying to get to the body and invest in taking out some of Vargas's punching power. And that's what he's trying earlier, but Vargas better be careful. De La Hoya throws a lot of punches, and they look they're not, like they're not effective, but he can get you with two of those, and you'll find yourself on the canvas if you rush in without caution. Vargas' strength apparent early. His left hook hits De La Hoya on the shoulder and moves him. De La Hoya's got to get that jab working. If he doesn't, it's just not going to be much of a fight. You've got to snap that head back if you're De La Hoya. Oh, what the heck? What the heck? Now Oscar lifts the jab back up to the head and again goes back to beating Vargas to the punch in the center of the ring. Vargas's left hook blocked by Delaware that time. 
blocked, but it was more than effective because it, it jarred his body a little bit. Sometimes when you're a puncher, you want the guy to block it so that you can hit the glove and the head at the same time. Shake him up. It'll be interesting to see if that works for Vargas. Oscar's very adept at catching punches with his glove. Deloia landing a right cross. One of the things that Floyd Mayweather Sr. has tried to do as Deloia's trainer is to further develop his right hand and make him more of a two-handed fighter. Vargas is starting to go to the body, which he's better do. Oscar picked a 10-ounce glove, so he's intending for this fight to go 10 rounds. This entire round so far has been fought in the center of the ring. For 12 rounds, I'm sorry. Where Deloia has his best chance. When you're fighting a big, strong man like Vargas, you don't want to cover up and take the shots on your shoulder. You want to get out of the way because even if he misses you, it takes so much away from your shoulders. Delaware oh, may have drawn blood from the nose of Vargas. Vargas now getting desperate to get, get to him and get him on the ropes again as he did in the first round. And you saw the apprehension of Delaware when he momentarily found himself in the corner. Already he knows how dangerous it will be to have his back against the ropes when fighting Fernando Vargas. Vargas pulls him to the ropes as if to say, I'm going to take you there whether you want to go or not. Keep your jab, Papa, okay? Keep your jab, Papa. That's it, I want you to step down like I told you. Two or three good combinations in a round. We win the whole round for you. And you're using your jab too, okay? Run them. Two or three good combinations. Get right back to your jab. You Put some pressure on him, but very intelligently. Don't let him surprise you. That's all we're looking for. Yeah. Hands up. This is yours. He's not as strong as you are. You're gonna get him. He's not strong. Vargas must find an intelligent and effective way to pressure De La Hoya. That isn't it. Copy box numbers in round two. De La Hoya 26 out of 56. 22 of them were jabs. Vargas 18 out of 38. <laughs> Mark is trying to go to the body early in this round. Deloia comes back upstairs. He's doing exactly what his corner man told him to do. Throw your combination, go back to your jab. Combination, back to your jab. Talking Wait about Oscar. Oscar is, just like his corner told him. Oscar, get this jab working. I'm telling you, that could be a bloody man, uh, Fernando Vargas. Could be pretty bloody. Oscar Deloy is better than most fighters at following the instructions of his corner. It showed up, ironically, in the late stages of the loss to Trinidad when he was advised by his corner to stay away and did so. Left hook lands for Vargas. Deloy has been out boxing him in the center of the ring again up until that moment. Vargas's best punch is his left hook to the body. And you saw Oscar digging the right elbow all the way down to his waistline to block it. Oscar's carrying that left hand pretty low, pretty low. Dangerously low. Vargas is not using his strength against De La Hoya. That is supposed to be his edge, and so far he has been unable to harness it effectively. He can't use it as well when they're out in open space in the center of the ring. That's why it's so important for Vargas to maneuver Deloia to the ropes somehow. Except for that brief interlude in the first round, which may have won Vargas the round, he hasn't been able to press Deloia to the perimeter of the ring. Hard right hand by Vargas. Landed flush. That's 
That's because that left hand is so low by Oscar. And now Oscar's back is against the ropes again. And Vargas takes over, pounding him to the body. Vargas is getting in every low blow that he can also. Real sneaky. De La Hoya unable to move his feet and get away. And Vargas pops him again with the left. Now Oscar gets his feet back to the center of the ring and goes back to jabbing Vargas away. Right that hand right hand hurt Vargas. It did hurt him. I don't know if Oscar's aware of it. Well, the power deficit may prevent Oscar from believing that he's hurt Vargas. This is the lot of them, but there's only one. There's only one. You're the only one. There's only one. Has Vargas found an effective way now to pressure De La Hoya? He was effective there. That was a borderline punch. Remember that the referee said that De La Hoya and his trunks a little high. Ampibox numbers in three, big for Vargas. 32 out of 55 to 17 out of 56 for De La Hoya. 20 to two to three edge in power connects in that round for Vargas. De La Hoya lands another jab. Vargas lands in return. Harold, how do you have it through three? Okay, Jim, two rounds to one, 29-28, ferocious Fernando Vargas. Jim, that, that cup of Oscar De La Hoya's it's just too high. The defining line for a low blow is the belly button. That cup is way above the belly button. So Cortez has got to imagine what a low blow is. But the truth of the matter is when, it, when Vargas lands to the body, he can't hurt Oscar because he's, he's hitting the cup. It takes away the, the advantage of a, of a body blow. The one thing Oscar De La Hoya's trainer better be aware of, when they go to the corner, that's stressful rounds. You shouldn't be shouting so much instructions, but let your men rest. Round four is again a boxing match at center ring. Vargas, if he's able to come back with that left hook after those right hands, we could have a knockdown here. He's just not able to get that left hook back after the delivery of the right hand. If there's any surprise in the early going, it is how dominant Vargas appears to be when they get to the ropes. De La Hoya just not able to handle Vargas's strength when they're at the perimeter of the ring. As long as his feet are moving, he's fine. Oscar is one Olympian. This guy is accustomed to adversity. You're not just going to beat him by whipping him one round. You got to constantly beat him if you Vargas. Good left uppercut by De La Hoya. Gets in a punch to the body as well. Big right hand by De La Hoya. Vargas pops De La Hoya with a left jab. Crowd's getting their money's worth in Vegas. There's a swelling under the right eye of Fernando Vargas. Hard right hand on the ear of Beloya by Vargas. Vargas is starting to challenge Oscar's left jab with his own left jab. You want to make certain too much damage has not already been done by Oscar's left jab. Eloya precariously close to the ropes for a moment there. Pirouetted away. Hits Vargas with a sharp right hand. And Eloya succeeds in fighting all of round four away from the ropes. Take it. 
Take a deep breath. Put some Vaseline on him. Hey, you, you, gotta, you gotta block it. Use your left and keep your hands high. If you throw first, he's gonna block it. So you gotta be in the offense. You gonna give me another round like this? Okay, baby. You're looking good. You want that jab, Poppy? The random combination up, okay? Which one? You're looking good. Start ripping the punches off all together. Huh? Walk him down this round. Right. Close up. Move okay, your head, okay? Down, boss. Good, baby. You're looking good. So far, more sweet science than bad blood in a very good boxing match. Terrific. CompuBox totals through four. Deloy in 91 out of 219. Vargas 88 out of 185. In other words, it's very close. Deloy with a big edge in jabs. Vargas with a corresponding edge in power punches. And he rips Deloy with a three punch combination there. And Oscar gives back as good as he gets. Locked. Delahoy is sending Landed. in for the fight. No right hand him. by Vargas, and the left hook lands behind it. Vargas starting to do more damage in the center of the ring. Delahoy has got to be the aggressor and try to keep him away with the jab. Good combination by Delahoy, and he hurt Vargas with that left hook. Both guys are hurting one another round after round. It's the one who's more effective in the body is going to withstand this. Been throwing hard punches, Larry. As Vargas showed in the Trinidad fight, he is capable of making adjustments during a fight. And he has found a way to do better in the center of the ring against De La Hoya. De La Hoya is always a good fighter when he moves his feet up and down, a lip bouncing here and there. We haven't seen that at all. He's out of his element. Blood from De La Hoya's nose. Vargas gets him into the corner. Deloria ducking and slipping. The Vargas crowd comes out of their seats as momentarily Oscar was trapped in the corner, but he slipped away. What maneuverability by Oscar Delahoy to be able to get out of the corner. He's taking a lot of shots, and that's not good. Now we understand why he wanted the 10-ounce glove. Yeah, because Vargas' is seemingly supernatural strength for a 154-pounder is showing up punch by punch. Chanting for Vargas. Oscar better get his feet moving. Just can't slug it out with this guy. in the first five rounds of this fight than he's ever taken in five rounds of any fight. Blood coming out of his nose, Vargas ripping him with shots along the ropes, and Fernando Vargas grins at De La Hoya as they complete round five. He's yours, he's alive, he's liable to quit. You got him now, don't let him surprise you. You got him, he's yours, the fight is yours. He's right here. He's right here. I want you to throw some body shot. He threw all his punches this round. Now you run your punches off this round, okay? Come on, baby. Come on. Wake up, baby. Come on. Run your punches off this round, okay? Smart. Don't don't let too much on the ropes, huh? Stay off the now stay off the rope now, okay? You let him punch for a while. Now you start working his body. Take some of the starch out of him. Okay? Along the ropes. Oscar De La Hoya has been at a distinct advantage. Disadvantage. Excuse me, disadvantage. Even when many of those blows are not landing, they're landing on shoulders, they're putting pressure on De La Hoya, not concussive punches, but punches. Power shots in round five. 
Deloy a 7 out of 15, Vargas 21 out of 55. That's what Floyd Mayweather Sr. meant when he said, hey, he threw all the punches in that round. Vargas sneaking ahead on Harold Letterman's scorecard as we reach the sixth. Vargas is doing the job of what Delahoya's corner told him to do, go to the body. Vargas is going to the body. And De La Hoya breaking a cardinal rule twice, blew air out of his nose trying to clear it. What does you that know, do, George? First thing, his corner doesn't even know what to tell him anymore. He stuttered before he even said, this is what you do. You gotta just take deep breath and hope that your corner can and let you spit it out from time to time. But don't blow your nose. And if you blow your nose, it causes the swelling. All of the swelling just all of a sudden it looks worse than what it really is. And De La Hoya, one of the great knowledgeable veterans of the sport, did it twice as he came into this round. Clearly bothered by the blood trickling from his nostril. Oscar's getting a chance to box a little bit. If he can get his confidence back in his boxing, he can change things. Move, Oscar, move. Swelling continues good. around Vargas's right eye. De La Hoya may have to hope that he can continue to touch that eye up with his left hand and compromise Vargas in the fight. There's blood coming from the eye region or the cheek region of Vargas. Not the kind of blood that would disturb his vision. It's under the eye. This is something his Oscars corners didn't tell him to do was the box. This, he's going to have to go back to the days when he had good trainers other than his present one and go back on his skills. You really are on Mayweather's case tonight, George. No, I'm on the, really, it's a compliment to the trainers that Oscar De La Hoya's had in his career. He's not just a one-dimension one fighter. Why play that game of standing in the ropes, playing body shots, box the man. Right cross landed flush for De La Hoya. He's having a pretty decent round. And just as the blood from his nose may have influenced judges in the last round, the blood on Vargas's cheek may influence judges in this round. Vargas trying to get to the body. De La Hoya armed him away. Again, De La Hoya is able for all of round six to stay off the rope, but he catches two big left hooks as the round comes to a close, and then lands a right hand on Vargas after the bell. He's got a little blood, that's it. It's only a little scratch, it's not much. Put some Vaseline on there. You're, hey, you're strong in the hips. Your punches hurt him a lot. You're getting to him. Put some Vaseline on him. End of the round. De La Hoya feeling good about having a good round through that punch after the bell. Here you see it in regular speed. And to try to retaliate for the two big left hooks. I have this as virtually an even fight. Still sweet science, but also real blood. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, three rounds each, 57, 57, I got it all even. I got all the even rounds, two, four, and six, to Oscar De La Hoya, all the odd rounds, uh, one, three, and five to ferocious Fernando Vargas, who landed more power shots in those rounds. So it's the smooth boxing of Oscar De La Hoya in the rounds that he won, the effective aggressiveness and harder cleaning shots of Vargas in the rounds that he won. Which is exactly what we might have expected. A classic confrontation here. De La Hoya has to box. Vargas wants to make it a fight. Oscar's bouncing and looking good now. He can keep this up all night. Things can get better for him if he does. Can he keep it up all night? He's got to be able to do it. That's the big question. <laughs> he 
Is it possible to put in the hard work and discipline training day after day after day required for De Hoya to fight his best fight here when you've already got the 100 million in the bank? That's one oh, of the things people question about. Well, these men are all about heart. Believe me, money has nothing to do with it when you're in the fifth round of a boxing match and blood is coming on down your face. No, but money, money might have something to do with it when it's Tuesday of a long week of training and you think you're putting in 100%, but you're not. That's the question. I think Oscar's done his work way back when he was a teenager. It's too late now to lose anything. Supposed absence of power visible there as De La Hoya landed three flush shots and Vargas keeps coming. De La Hoya understands now that he is the superior boxer. And no matter what happened, he can always revert back to his boxing. That'll keep him in there with this kid he's thinking. What a nightmarish prospect for De La Hoya. The kid calls him out. The kid goes him over a five-year period. The kid finally gets him to take a fight that he said he'd never take. He gets into the ring and discovers that Vargas is so much stronger that he's going to be on the razor's edge all the way. But he's winning anyway. How you feel? OK. I need you to run some combinations up, man, because right now, this man out of it, man. You run them combinations three or four times from the body to the head. On, Give me two good combinations. In the flurries, okay? Don't just stay in the middle of the ring. When you stay there, you're in trouble. You need to bring him to the ropes and then hit him. Take him to the ropes. Being the stronger man doesn't mean anything when you get hit with clean, quick punches that De La Hoya landed in that round, one with the left and one with the right. CompuBox numbers in round seven, De La Hoya 23 out of 64. Vargas's punch count dropped to 45. He only threw 42 in the last round. So Vargas's pace has slowed in the last two rounds. De La Hoya has picked it up. And as he stays in the center of the ring and out, boxes Vargas, momentarily he commands the fight. hand shots from De La Hoya, and Vargas has taken them pretty well, but they underline De La Hoya's dominance when they're in the middle of the ring boxing. A beautiful feint followed by a right hand. Low blow by Vargas. Joe Cortez says keep him up. Difference in hand speed showing up here. Oscar consistently beating Vargas to the punch. Oh, he's doing it with nice combinations. And he understands that he's got the rest of the ring if he needs to get out of the way. Vargas does not follow him beyond two feet. Jabs, jabs, and let Oscar duck to see what he want to do. Great performance by Oscar De La Hoya. Clearly outgunned in power. He's finding a way to fight his fight. It's the night of the left jab now by Oscar. And, it, and his it, it, boxing it all, ability. It almost looks as though Vargas is a little confused at the moment. He can't figure out a way to get back as Oscar imposes his boxing skills on him. Vargas had it going so well through the fifth. Now De La Hoya in the sixth and seventh and eighth takes command, and his right hand is better than it's ever been before. We talked earlier about Vargas making adjustments 
Let's give Oscar credit now for him making adjustments. He did it with what he had gotten long ago. Boxing ability and a good advice. Vargas is now waiting for one shot. And you can't do that with a man who's got a left jab. The drama builds in Vegas. We're two thirds of the way through, and Oscar De La Hoya increasingly takes over with his jab in his right hand. It's nervous time in the Vargas corner. Do me a favor. Give me a favor. Keep your, keep your rhythm going, your head moving, okay? I want you to do, maybe. Here's what I want you to do, look here. Here's what I want you to do, baby. He's been burned out, baby. He's burned out. He ain't got all the. Fernando, keep your hands up. With your good defense, you can do some. But keep your hands up. How do you feel? As far as Oscar De La Hoya is concerned, what he sees on Vargas's face is good blood. Blood from clean shots like that. In round eight, a CompuBox festival for De La Hoya. 31 out of 62, as opposed to only eight out of 38 for Vargas. A De La Hoya 15 to five edge in Power Connects. The momentum belongs entirely to Oscar De La Hoya as we come to round nine. Back De La Hoya up. He gets precariously close to the ropes, but Vargas can't drive him there. Vargas has lost a lot of his steam because those left jab snapped his head back, and there's not a lot of energy in his back now. And it kept him from getting to De La Hoya's body, which he had begun to do earlier in the fight. And now Vargas begins to come back and shows the determination that has defined his career. Vargas ripping De La Hoya to the body again. And it's all happening because Vargas get close. When he's close, he takes over. Chopping right hand by De La Hoya. Momentarily stems the Vargas tie. Fernando just stepping in closer and shortening the distance. Vargas has only been past the seventh four times, but he went to the 12th with Quarte, went to the 12th with Trinidad, beat Winky Wright in the 10th and 11th and 12th. He's done this too. Deloy has a great record in the late rounds of fights, with the noteworthy exception, of course, of the Trinidad loss. Deloy had this fight in control. He didn't try to finish Vargas off, and this is what he's getting back. Once you hurt a guy, keep on him and try to finish him. Do you think he actually had the weaponry to finish Fernando he had Vargas? It. He's had it, but he's more confident and more... Uh, he, he really is trying to conserve his energy for the distance. Go for the knockout when you knock that man's head back. Finish him off. Otherwise, he'll come back to finish you off. Well, after hitting Francisco Castillejo with everything but the kitchen sink, and knocking him down only in the last 10 seconds of his first 154-pound fight. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, have difficulty believing that he could finish Vargas here. Vargas better beware not to exchange left hooks with De La Hoya. Big right hand upstairs again for De La Hoya. The right hand has been so tremendously effective for him here.
See, you see how you want that round? That's what you gotta do. Get him some water. Get more water. Come on, let's get water in here. That's what you did. That's it. As, as you did this round, that's what you gotta do. Bob and weave and block his punches. How do you feel? I want a good boxing round this time, okay? You still got leg. You know, this man ain't got nothing. Left. He he fighting on instinct. He ain't got nothing. Keep doing like you're doing, us, okay? And, and quit, you ain't got to lay up on the ropes and stuff no more. Just whoop his ass from our side, okay? You ain't After slow going in the sixth, seventh, and eighth rounds, 45 punches thrown, 42 punches thrown, 38 punches thrown, Vargas goes back up to 76 in the ninth round, and as a result, the fight changes again. Harold, how do you have it scored through nine? Okay, Jim, five rounds to four. 86, 85, a very narrow one-point margin for Oscar De La Hoya. Jim, I gotta tell you something, Fernando Vargas, when he, when he moves his hands like he did in round nine, certainly he's gonna win these rounds, but like you called it, round six, seven, and eight, easy for Oscar De La Hoya, much beautifully. I still say that Vargas is really being hampered when the body shots hit that cup because they don't hurt De La Hoya. And, and it's just not fair, that cup is too high. George, you agree that the cup is too high? Doesn't matter. You get a good body shot, it hurts, cup or no cup. Just don't want to get them too low. That's where you don't have any defense. Yeah, but De La Hoya can hit skin on a place where Vargas, if he hits the same point on De La Hoya's body, is going to hit the pad. Yeah, but that pad is not going to help as much as you think. The pad is just looks like that. It helps to, helps to below the belt, if you believe it. Indeed. De La Hoya appeared it. hurt by that punch on the pad. Boxers are accustomed to hitting heavy bags, knocking the air out of heavy bags. <laughs> Certainly, as that left hook exchange, Vargas better stay away from. Vargas bending to try to get to Deloya's body, and Deloya with an opportunity whacked him with the left hook right on the bloody cheek. You never left hook throw left hooks with a left hook. as Vargas seems conscious of trying to get in something big. What an amazing job De La Hoya has done of staying off the ropes. Ever since round three. Early in the fight, it appeared that if Vargas could just get De La Hoya to the ropes enough, he was going to knock him out. Instead, De La Hoya has, in large part, given him a boxing lesson in the center of the ring. Vargas felt that by putting the pressure on, he could wear De La Hoya down in the late rounds. Are we seeing it here? George, do you see any sign that De La Hoya may be running out of gas a little? It really doesn't matter with Oscar De La Hoya. This guy's so full of heart that wearing him down is not going to get it. You're going to have to beat him down. You're going to have to beat him up with punches. Don't rely on anything about wearing him down. Again, the blood flowing from De La Hoya's nose. Again, the blood flowing from Vargas's cheek. Big left hook hurts Vargas. De La Hoya tries to follow up. Bell saves Vargas to end the round. Vargas very lucky that didn't happen 20 seconds earlier. Come on, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. You have to fight. You're the champion. Come on, you got it. You got the. I'm here to protect you, my man. I'm not taking out of any punishment. Muy bien, muy bien, muy bien. Get him up, man. Get him up. Get him up, man. Left foot out, man. Don't be smart. Don't get wide, huh? Don't be wide. Everything nice and tight. Welcome down. Huh? Here is the highlight punch of the fight so far. A left hook following. A combination to the body that staggers Vargas, who is still blinking in the corner. Now, Vargas has better have the instinct now to back up a little bit. 
Make Oscar come to him. Don't give him any more of those opportunities. Back up and clear your head. You know, if you saw Oscar De La Hoya as a teenager, as some of us did, the first thing he would have said was, my God, what a left hook. 15 years later, it's still true. Both fighters have an 11th round knockout on their records. De La Hoya knocked out Obacar in the 11th back in 1999. Vargas knocked out Raul Marquez in the 11th at around the same time. Neither fighter has ever scored a knockout in the 12th. Why hasn't De La Hoya pressed the advantage? Why hasn't he explored whether Vargas was still groggy from the end of the previous round? Has he given Vargas a chance to recuperate? I think if Oscar De La Hoya... Rocket left hook, a sensational left hook by De La Hoya. Again, he set it up with body punches. Vargas jumps up off the canvas. Let me at him. There's so much desire in Fernando Vargas. But a better fighter is beating him now. This would be the most satisfying moment of Oscar De La Hoya's career if he could finish this guy. If he could make Fernando Vargas eat his words. If he could knock him out. And he does. Oscar De La Hoya has the most satisfying, the richest, the biggest, the most emotional win of his whole career. Fernando Vargas may have had a six-pack in his stomach. He did not have a six-pack in his chin. Oscar De La Hoya closed the show. He landed 23 out of 33 power shots. George, look at the left hook. I mean, you know, this is a tribute to Al Jazar and uh, Emmanuel Stewart. He couldn't win it the way he wanted to. He went back to his original, and it happened the way it always has happened since he was a teenager. Setting up the money punch, which has yes. defined his career all along. It's a left hook, and it's about movement and not being an old slugger, but a boxer puncher. I think if he'd had his original trainers, this fight could have ended like that a lot earlier. <laughs> Combinations just like Alcazar told him to do when he was a teenager. And Joe Cortez says that's enough. Oscar has earned the technical knockout. Vargas wasn't firing back at the end. And give Delaware credit. So many of us said, myself included, that he wouldn't have the punting power to do this at 154 pounds. We were wrong. He stopped him on his feet. But like I said, it was stuff he's had since he's been at top rank. Putting it on in the last couple of rounds, trying with heart and combinations. To the body, to the head, and continuously throwing shots. They don't make them like that anymore. Can they still <laughs> question Deloy's desire? Rich guys can fight after all. Absolutely. Just the point I was about to suggest. <laughs> with silk pajamas and all. They no matter fight. how many hundreds of millions of dollars are in the bank, silk pajamas, golf, mansions, he still loves to fight. Yeah. So stay away from guys who eat caviar. <laughs> <laughs> the golden boy is golden once again. Let's go to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Mandalay Bay, before we announce the official time, a round of applause for two great champions that came here to face each other tonight, Fernando Vargas and Oscar De La Hoya. The end comes at 48 seconds of round number 11. The winner by knockout victory, and now the unified champion from East LA, the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. Final.
Daniel CompuBox numbers on a great, great fight. A fight which will be remembered for a long time. Oscar De La Hoya landing 54 more punches, throwing 135 more in a showing that can only be called an act of will. Oscar De La Hoya setting up his victory by dominating the jab category. Landing 112 more jabs, throwing nearly 300 more, and landing 40% of them. Vargas had the edge numerically in power punches, but none of Vargas's power punches proved as effective as the series of left hooks that De La Hoya was able to set up for himself in those last couple of rounds First by landing his right hand over and over, and then by going to the body. And there goes a shaken, beaten, disappointed Fernando Vargas, whose life's dream ended up with Joe Cortez waving in his face and saying, son, you've had enough. And Larry Merton stands by with a great champion, Oscar Delo. Thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Oscar. Did you think it was gonna come to a knockout ending, or did it look like it was going to best be in a very intense boxing match as it moved along? I did feel his conditioning was wearing down a bit, um, and, and I know my conditioning is great. I felt really good, but I should have moved my head a little more, pop more jabs. He was wide open for the jab, but uh, it's a learning process. Well, you've learned pretty well over the years, and you're never quite satisfied, even with how does this rank among your greatest victories? Uh, it's got to rank up there. I mean. Fernando Vargas is not, no pushover. He's a strong puncher, but I knew I was more, I was faster. I knew I had more speed so I can uh, utilize my quickness and, uh, and eventually catch him in the later rounds. He got you on the ropes several times. Was that distracting to you? Did you believe that he was too strong for you in there? Did you have to make adjustments? At first I thought he was too strong for me, but when I was rolling and he was missing, I knew he was gonna get tired in the later rounds. That, that's what that's what it does. Remember the fight I told you, no sweat breaker against Mayweather. He got him tired. He was like that, getting him tired, and then later rounds knocked him out. When did you see him getting tired? I believe like in the seventh, even the sixth, seventh round, somewhere around there. I felt he was wearing down. What did the blood mean to you to see him bloody like that? What is that message that sends to a fighter? Uh, I'm sorry to say, but uh, I know it sounds brutal, but when I see blood, I want more. That's just the way it is. How satisfying is this simply on a personal level after being taunted and goaded for so many years by him? Oh, it feels great because all the talk he was saying, I just got fed up with it. I wasn't gonna fight him, but he got under my skin. So I told everybody inside the ring, my fists are gonna do the talking. What keeps Oscar De La Hoya going? You've got all the money in the world. You're married to a lovely woman. You've had so much success. Why do you keep doing this? Well, in boxing, Larry, first of all, it's my whole team. Mayweather, Little Joe, my brother, Bob Arum, especially my wife. My wife motivated me, although she was there with me for about a month and a half up in camp. Eh, the team, you know, sometimes feel, well, we don't want women there, this and that, but my wife is different. She pushes me, every time I leave that room to go train, she tells me, you better train hard or don't come back. <laughs> All right, I'll train hard. All right, let's take a look at the 11th round and, and you decide, you tell us what was going on. Left hook, left hook right here. I was just waiting for his jab. He was starting to throw a solid jab, but I knew that if I fainted him, I fainted him and I threw the left hook. We were always working on that. And if I had a chance to throw the right hand, I would throw it. I was working on the body, just trying to stop him here basically. This looks as like the end see, of the Corte fight. Well, as you can see, I'm keeping my composure now. I'm not throwing wild punches. I'm keeping my composure and kind of seeing what I have opened. And now and I can pick my shots and really connect right there. Did he say anything to you during the fight? No, he just left. I thought he was going to shake my hand or something, but he just left. It's okay, no problem. Do you feel sort of like you beat up a kid? Because the first time you laid eyes on him, he was a kid. Well, you know what? Uh, I never disrespect any fighter because any fighter who steps inside this ring, I respect a lot because it's a tough sport. But um, he talked a lot of stuff about me and I didn't like that. So I had to show him a lesson. How long do you want to keep going on? Uh, until I know I can secure my legacy in boxing. That's fighting Shane Mosley. That's fighting Trinidad if he comes back. If he comes back, if he doesn't, I respect that. 
but uh, fighting the best. You have to fight the best to be the best. And uh, with Mayweather in my corner and all my team, man, I'm going straight to the top. You told me yesterday that you thought, perhaps, that Trinidad's retirement was a, a negotiating ploy to get a better deal in a rematch. Is that what you believe? Well, who knows? Who knows? Because um, a fighter wants to be with his family. A fighter, after, after accomplishing so much in the ring the way Trinidad did, you know, he wants to be with his family and, and take some time off. Maybe when he rests enough, he'll decide to come back. Who knows? But uh, like I said before, if he retires, I respect it. So you're looking forward to fighting Shane Mosley and trying to avenge that defeat sometimes early next year? Well, I have to. I have to. In order to become a great, great champion, I have to beat the guys who beat me. And uh, Shane Mosley is a great fighter. Even though he lost twice already to Vernon, he's still a great fighter. He still has a talent. But um, I, I'm, uh, I'm looking to, uh, to fight the best. Even Winky Wright is saying, well, I don't want to fight him, this and that. Hey, if it presents itself, because you know I've never ducked nobody. If he presents himself, then hey, why not fight him? What farewell message would you send to Fernando Vargas? Uh, I'm not a lightweight. <laughs> I'm not a 130-pound puncher anymore. I have a punch, and a lot of people uh, are surprised when they come in the ring with me. They don't think I'm fast enough. They don't think I'm strong enough. Maybe they think I'm still that little puppy I told you about eight years ago, Larry. But uh, I can pack a punch, that's for sure, and people have to uh, respect that, hopefully. They will. One more thing. Independencia Mexicana, viva todos los mexicanos, por esta victoria es para ustedes, East LA, a toda mi gente, mi familia, Mili, te amo, un besote. Thank you very much. Big Bear. And now back to Jim. In Espanol, for a reason. Now we told you that it was a relatively inexperienced judging panel for a fight of such magnitude, and on one of the three scorecards, perhaps that shows up. Let's show you how the judges had the fight scored at the moment of the technical knockout in the 11th round. Relatively inexperienced and unexposed Paul Smith and 70-year-old Doug Tucker, both with Deloy ahead 96-94. Patricia Jarman Manning had Vargas leading in the fight, 97 to 94. So a majority draw, or with a knockdown, maybe even a victory, was still within reach of Vargas as they entered that 11th round. But Deloy left no doubt, as you suggested in the middle stages of the fight, George, that he might be able to do if he committed to that. Hey, the Quarte comeback victory was a great victory. Even his performance against Mosley in a loss was a great performance. But I think this was the greatest performance. Of no Oscar's doubt about career. it. Experience paid off in the end. He's been in with Pernell Whitaker. Uh, De La Hoya's got a loads of experience. And in the last couple of rounds, that's what pulled him through. Vargas had a lot of heart, but you could need heart and experience to get in those latter rounds with good punches like De La Hoya. I was so surprised that De La Hoya had even had the courage to continue after the bloody middle rounds. And the performance suggests that Oster hasn't lost anything, may in fact be an improved fighter, and would have good chances against Shane Mosley and Felix Trinidad should he be able to secure those fights. Uh, in, in my mind, he's the best fighter in the division mm -hmm. right now. I don't think that he has to look out for anybody. If you're going to get in there with Oscar, you better have your bring your bag with you because he's bringing a lot of stuff with him. The guy is the best in the division. I don't like saying it, but he boxed. He proved that he could box and punch. That's and, all you need in, in that division. And surely you appreciate, incidentally, George, when you, when you see a victory like this, you have to appreciate and honor what De La Hoya has meant to the public following and the dramatic impact of the sport through all of his career. Yeah, he's been a beautiful smile. He's a crossover to anything you wanted commercially, and he's a, an asset to his family. He's pulling for his team, he's everything I'd want my boy to be. All right. My boy has to be. We're hopeful that Larry Merchant will be able to get a word with Fernando Vargas. He has gone to Vargas' uh, dressing room right now to see if we can hear from Fernando before we leave you tonight. But right now, in the wake of this tremendous fight, great victory by De La Hoya, let's go back upstairs to our host, Bob Costas. Jim, thanks very much. Uh, for the benefit of those in the audience, myself included, who are not bilingual, apparently what uh, De La Hoya said when uh, he began to speak in Spanish, our people downstairs tell us that he said he dedicates this victory to the Mexican people and to his wife. We know that his wife was in his corner to begin with. Some portion of the Mexican-American community was not. The victory itself is one thing, but the manner in which this victory was achieved must win him respect from even his greatest detractors. He's got to have respect in addition to fighting all of the top fighters of his era. It was a great victory. It 
Anthony with a, after he saw that he had established control and had Fernando set up, rather than just throw a flurry of punches, he took his time and set him up and knocked him out with a left hook, basically reminiscent of the left hook that Sugar Ray Robinson knocked out Gene Foreman with. He got most of his punching power from his toes on that punch. That was a very smart thing to do, a great victory. We have just been told that Fernando Vargas is headed for the hospital. We have no further report. It could be just for observation, as is often the case in situations like this. But obviously, then, we will not have a post-fight interview with Fernando Vargas. And it was notable, and in fact, De La Hoya noted it himself, that Vargas maintained whatever animosity that is, and this must be especially galling for him, Still considering the level of hatred that he must feel toward De La Hoya for whatever reasons. He did not go over, even a, in a perfunctory fashion, didn't go over in so much as tap him on the shoulder yeah. or nod at him and acknowledge that he had been defeated. I was surprised at that. Usually there's a lot of animosity in a lot of fighters prior to the fight, but usually, especially when you have a real brutal fight like this where both guys was hurting each other, you develop respect along the way. But in this case, your blood bird still exists. Pretty clearly, even had he lost tonight, Oscar De La Hoya had built up Hall of Fame credentials. But as he has said all along, he is fighting now for his place in history. In your view, what does this victory do for that spot in history, pending whatever may follow against Mosley or whomever else? It's definitely got to give him a good spot in history. In addition, it was the first really, I would say, good fight that he's fought in a long time, from the Shane Mosley fights all the way back, and even the fight with Trinidad. This was a very impressive fight that he fought. Because the fight he fought had some credentials. And I think for, from a boxing viewpoint, it was an impressive fight for all of us. As Jim Lampley and his colleagues noted, early on it was very clear. We knew that Vargas was stronger than De La Hoya. Yeah. He was much stronger in the early rounds, and yet De La Hoya yeah. found a way, found a way to build up points through superior boxing skills. It did not appear that he had any kind of one-punch knockout power at 154, yeah. but cumulatively he got it done. Also, I think what I saw in Vargas, I think the extra weight that he picked up was good, but I think he gave up something. He seemed to have been so muscle-bound that he was tight. He, and usually guys like that who develop muscles from lifting weight, they, they get tight in the later rounds, their punches, their push, and he was really vulnerable to be knocked out much earlier than that. He was very, very much open inside when he was started getting close. And he, his output of punches went down tremendously. I think a lot of it has to do with that extra weight lifting that he picked up. You've been around this game for a long, long time. Where does this fight rank in terms of excitement and the quality of the fight? It would have to rank one of the good fights up there. Not a great fight. Not great. Was, not great, but it would be one of the good fights because it was a give and take. It was certain rounds would be Vargas, the next round would be, you know, for Oscar. And that, that's what makes a good fight when you have the ebb and flow. It was never a one-way fight. So from an expert's point of view, you rate it as very good, but not great. From an excitement and entertainment point of view, this was one that seemed to live up to the hype. The people got what oh, yes. they paid for tonight. Well, you had two big fights, as we said earlier. You had Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson was promoted as being a big fight, but it didn't turn out to be a competitive fight. But this one was a good competitive fight. Emmanuel, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Hall of Fame manager and trainer Emmanuel Stewart, Fran Charles, George Foreman, Larry Merchant, and of course Jim Lampley who called the fight. Our thanks to all of them. De La Hoya versus Vargas has been brought to you by Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino. Elegance and entertainment on the Las Vegas Strip. Miller Lite, it's Miller time. And by HBO Pay-Per-View, the best in pay-per-view entertainment, brought to you by the folks at HBO. We'd also like to thank our internet partners and the following magazine partners. And so for all of us here at the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, this is Bob Costas saying so long. We hope you enjoyed it. How could you not? Some fight De La Hoya over Vargas. Our executive producer has been Rick Bernstein. Tonight's telecast was produced by Dave Harmon and directed by Mark Payton. Associate producers Thomas Odelfeld and Brian Lockhart. Assistants to the producer Abteen Motia and Joe Gonzalez. Production manager John McCalley. Technical supervisor Bob Hunter. And the technical director Doug Getz. Good night, everybody.